Hey everyone, Mike here with Musio, and uh, welcome to another live composition screencast. This is where we sit down and write a piece of music in about 30 minutes. Here's what we wrote today. All right, so now we're gonna dive in and uh, this is the live screencast from start to finish. I hope you enjoy. Hey everyone, Mike here with Musio, and this is another live composition screencast. So this is where we go through and just write a piece of music live, uh, warts and all, and we're gonna use Musio 100%. It's gonna be one plugin, and all the sounds are coming from Musio. So let's get started. Let's start with, uh, this is, let's go to the catalog. Uh, and we'll start with uh, orchestral chords. And I think we'll do something, um, let's start with just some minor, minor chords here. So everything you hear, this we actually sampled the whole orchestra playing minor chords. Uh, so you have it with the root and the bass, right? So if it's C minor, you've got the C in the bass. And then we have the third in the bass. So that would be like, if it was C minor, you'd have the E flat in the bass. So let's get started. Here we go. Let's start with, we're at 90 BPM. I think that's fine for now. Okay, very simple. Uh, and you will see, I'm sure, uh, if any of you are real musicians out there, you can see how quick and dirty I'm doing this. Uh, we're going to go really fast. And that doesn't mean, so fast doesn't mean quality. Okay, that's key. If you're composing for real, this is a little discla disclaimer. Take your time. Don't do what I'm doing. Uh, all right. So that was good. That was kind of just the, the, that's the framework for what we're going to do. And I think what we'll want is, why don't we add a little bit of like a percussive element maybe? Let's take a look at, well, we can always do, here, let's listen here. There's a, mm, I mean, Drums of War 1 is still an old classic. This is something, yeah, why not? Just do that. Okay. Okay, it's just like war time. Here we go. Here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a pattern. Anyway, this is how I work is I just kind of, you know, I play it in and see what we come up with. If there's a little bit of improvisation involved, you know, the, the idea is to not have a blank canvas for, for longer than like 10 seconds. Just record whatever the heck you think is right. And then you can go in and you can edit stuff, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tweak a little bit of the, the velocities on this. Well, first we'll, uh, we'll quantize this, all right? This first hit is, uh, is way too much. 
even this one's a little bit too high. So I'm going to go through. Actually, what we'll do is we'll get the first two bars sounding right. And once those are good, then we'll just do the old. You know, I know there's usually what I'll do is I can actually uh, automate a lot of this, but I thought I'd just do it all manually so you can see what's happening. Bum, 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 bum. It's almost like a little bit of a heartbeat, right? And that reminds me, one of the things we should do is potentially score an actual scene in something. That could be kind of fun. little bit louder just a just a tad and, uh, and I think we're gonna be in good shape here okay so we have so far we have the orchestra playing chords basically a chord progression C minor, E flat minor, C minor, F sharp minor. Then we have it going to, uh, let me scroll here, D minor. That's what this is. It's on a D uh, to F minor and then back to C minor. Really a simple idea. And then just a, a percuss percussion groove. What now, you ask? Well, I think we need to have some kind of a melody. Let's do... Uh, well, I mean, everyone's favorite is, is uh, French horns, right? Should I do that? That's the obvious thing to do. But let's do the 12 French horns from Cinebrass Pro. So we'll do these. Uh, yeah, that should be good. All right, uh, so what I, I like to do is, if you're performing another track on top of something, have another track already playing so you can kind of sight read. Um, if you do this for a long time, you get really good at being able to sight read the scroll view in the same way you can sight read real notation. So we've got C minor to E flat minor, so I'll just be watching this go by, and I'll be performing a melody. Uh, that corresponds with that. We'll see what we come up with. I think that works. Here's the melody that we came up with. Looking pretty good. Uh, I feel like, you know what we're going to do? Something we sampled recently <laughs> is euphoniums. These are really cool. Uh, if anyone grew up in band, you know what a euphonium is. It's basically, it's a valved instrument. And it's kind of sounds like a French horn, but it's like a tiny tuba, if you will. That's how I would easily, I know it's not that, but it's the closest thing. Okay. So we could just double it in the euphonium and see what that's... I'm just going to do this. Copy, paste. Here we go. Good. All right. 
So that's just our inner line. Now, uh, we got to have the violins doing something. So let's do, we'll bring up our legato, just a regular legato vibrato. This violin's one. And why don't we do violins two as well? But what I'm going to do is, just for sake of expediency, I'm going to assign them both to the same MIDI channel. These are both assigned to MIDI channel 5. So in your sequencer, you can just click 5, and it should play. It should play both of them simultaneously, which it does. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more of reverb to these uh, melodic violins. And uh, let's, I'm going to just improvise something here to see what we can. Okay. So I'm going to bring back this. All right, here we go. We're going to just start really simply. I think. Let's see what else we can do. I'm going to just look around for another instrument here. You know. if we like doubled the French horns just using the uh, acoustic cello legato or I could start off with just the cello first and then the horns can come in let's figure this out yeah um, let's start low so they're Doubling the French horns now first. What did I do here? I screwed up something. What did I do? Sorry. Museo 8. Okay. So now, why don't we, you know, let's add some, like, sound design elements. So let's go with, uh, we have something here called collision, which we call as, like, an impact designer. Okay. Cover your ears. This might be loud. Hold on a second. All right. Ready? I'm going to hit play. Get ready. Okay. That might be good. We've got just some tickies, we've got hits, different types of hits. We've got some sub booms, if you can hear them. Some interesting sustains that are kind of non-tonal in nature. Some subs. Let's go with the designed impacts. Um, oh, I haven't loaded that one yet. Let's see if there's something in there that could work. Oh, 
Yeah, I deleted it by accident. All right, there it is. All right. So everything in mod wheel control controls the low pass filter. Sorry, high pass filter. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. When you're writing, put more thought into your choices, okay? Don't do what I do. But there's something to be said about just going with your gut and doing something. I think that works. So we we do have this percussive percussive thing going in the which are effectively bass drums. I think we need a little bit more to emphasize. Let's emphasize that with some other lower hits just to give it more color and depth. And actually one of the keys if you're writing music is to not layer things a million times. Like the best kind of music is where you're very intentional about the choices you make. But if you're going to layer, um, you know, do it to really emphasize that one layer, if that makes any sense. Like, we have basically three things going on here. We've got the percussion groove. We've got, well, we've got the harmony. It's the second thing. And then you have the melody. And there's kind of a hidden sort of counter line in there. So three and a half things going on. And you really don't want to go any more than that. Uh, if it's too complicated, you're, the ear can't really handle what's going on. It's it's especially upon a first listen. So if you're writing trailer music, trailer music is the most basic style of this uh, this music, where everything has to be very simple. And you almost want to just stick to two layers in a way, um, and they have to be super impactful. Anyway, let's see what we come. So we got here. Some of these are really low. I don't know if you can hear it. If you're listening on your phone. Uh, I don't know. That'll work. The key is to make sure you get the right. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Where's my metronome? We'll just do it that one time and quantize it and do this. And if you're composing on a real project, you know, be careful about the whole copy paste thing. You know, if you're going to copy paste, at least make some kind of an alteration, right? Make it interesting. All right. So we'll just grab that last hit and that'll be good. Okay, so whew. this MIDI, oh, all right, am I actually going to do this in front of you? All right, this MIDI data needs to be cleaned up. Give me a second. Da, 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 da. Normally, I would just make sure it's clean before I copy paste it, but I didn't. Blah, blah, blah. This is probably faster just to do it this way. Doopy doopy doo. All right. Good. 
some of these hits feel like they're off if they're, if they're not hitting exactly. One second. Good. Now, um, you know, we could... Now, oof. Again, I think we should color the orchestra with some choir, just a little bit. Um, we have our old classic here, uh, Voxos, which is our choir library. Why don't we do... Um, we'll do... Let's just do ooh. too high. Yeah, let's do that. up. I always have the first track up. This to this, and then we'll go to that. So basically D minor is what we're going to do, F minor, if you can see, and then we'll do C minor. Here we go. I think we're getting into a good place here. You know, it would keep going and there should be something interesting going on. I mean, this is just good underscore. You know, this this should be hold on. This this hit right here, it's another one of these hits. It almost reminds me of the Golden Eye hit, you know, from the title screen music. Yeah, I'm I'm dating myself. Um good. And then maybe how about just some like tam tam swells and stuff like that, you know? Uh blah, 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 blah. Sure. Let's load up these guys from Cinepark. Um, I'm actually, I'm always impressed at the speed at which things download in Musio. That was 270 megabytes. I do have a fast internet here, but I'm on Wi-Fi. Uh, it's working pretty well. Uh, gongs and tam tams. Let's see, we've got it. Okay. I like the way these are mapped there. What we've done is we've put the, on all percussion, it's always C and D, middle C and D. And if there's other variations, it's C, D, C, D, C, D. And then the B below C is always some kind of a roll. And you and it's mapped to the to mod wheel, so you can do crescendos and, and all that. So let's, uh, why don't we crescendo into the downbeat first? We 
do more than that. Here we go. Nah, just let's just start right on there. If you're going to do these, they have to be, they can't be too loud. And I might have too much stuff going on here. I'm just going to mess around with one thing and it might be a terrible idea. Um, oh, I spelt it wrong. Let's do this and uh, I mean, if we're just doing it with the, again, keeping to our pattern of only three things going on at once, basically, why don't we... like it <laughs> I don't think it works it just doesn't make sense it's like well why why is it there you're just doing it because that's what you think you're supposed to do but uh, um, I don't know should we just add some other weird color just for fun maybe we'll just bring up like um, you know maybe just some like bass you know <laughs> This is some kind of a no. Let's go down. Right? Okay, we're basically just going to duplicate the. Just color the low brass, or sorry, yeah, the low brass and low strings. about you but this tam tam is annoying like why is it there i'm going to delete it it just sounds like it's getting in the way that i'm hearing the music Okay, 
I think we're getting there. Um, I don't think there's anything else we would need to add here. You know, what it, what it needs is you would want to stem this out. Well, first of all, either mix it yourself, put it through some really nice reverbs or do some kind of a compression. Uh, but if you don't know how to do that, highly recommend sending it to an engineer where you would stem out all of these things and have someone who has studied how to mix their whole lives. Um, that is always the best. If you can, if you can do that, find a colleague or a friend who is learning how to mix, send it to them. Uh, I always work with an engineer. It's always 10 times better. I've tried to do it myself and <laughs> it doesn't work out. I, I know what my strengths and weaknesses are. Anyway, well, I think, I think we're good. I think we'll just call it a day. And this is our little piece of music we wrote. How long is this thing? Uh, it's what? 40 seconds. All right. I don't know how long it's been, but so let's take a look. This is what we have written. And uh, I'll just kind of click through the MIDI uh, as things play. Actually, I have a better idea. I might just do this sort of sequence view. Um, eh, no, it's just kind of a mess to look at. Yikes. We'll just look at the, uh, the MIDI view. That's fine, and then I'll click through individual things. <laughs> Well, there's our piece. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.